Glimmerick's rolling hills where the north wind blow a chill. In a little field below the road, a signpost pine stone hill. Twas there an artist's own terrain that his story was made. By two men working near a fort Enclosed by a palisade In eighteen hundred and sixty-eight As autumn shades drew near that time in Ireland's history when the potato had no peer. They reaped the crop that autumn day, not knowing what lay in store. And Darda's name would rise to fame and be part of our folklore. A flagstone place beneath the soil now took them by surprise. And as they dug and turned aside, more treasures did arise. With precision care the test they dared, till the spot they had explored. For discovered was a precious find known as the Ardahore. At first unearthed was a silver brooch beneath a slab of stone. And with their hands they slowly took to dislodge that earthy loam. Three further brooches were exposed as their hands did slowly creep. And there before their startled eyes, a chalice lay a tree feet deep. <coughs> now this artifact, which was due gold, was a complex piece of work. Skill and craft of early art ingrained on the silver core of Celtic design with flags of gold are made with enamel beads with gilts of bronze and silver rings and words of filigree. Now this precious find in history's lore is known to all mankind. And to revere this masterpiece a memento was designed. A trophy for our Gaelic stars as their feats we do admire and fulfill the dream of a great fifteen and live the Sam Maguire. 
now enshrined in fame is our best name to worldwide acclaim. Its chalice now is on display in our national museum. <coughs> it's travelled o'er the Atlantic foam to salute our fellow gales. Now art as proud to be endowed with Ireland's holy grave. <laughs> 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 song is all the way from County Roscommon. Lovely. But they thought they were through to the All Island Crown of 1962. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot that the kingdom had a bag full of tricks who we beat them before in 1946. And I haven't left Declan kind forget it ever since. But we're delighted to have <coughs> Ree Nakrochri. The man himself with the regal appearance, look, he's even tugged out today with the regal, as, a, as a Celtic bard. Uh, it's uh, none other than the great Declan Coyne singing the ballad of Aileen Cuss. Hopefully. Declan, you're going to be introduced to us. Okay. <coughs> Kerry, um, I don't know, but most of you might know that Aileen Cust was the first officially, officially recognised female veterinary surgeon in, in uh, Britain and Ireland and uh, she worked in a place called Let League which is, would be the next parish to me and uh, I grew up listening to stories about her because the guy who employed her was um, William Byrne and there's a monument to William Byrne in the square in Roscommon if you're ever passing through a stop and say hello to him. Uh, William Byrne Two sisters of William Burns were married into the Coin clan, so I kind of grew up listening to stories about Aileen Cust and William Burns. So uh, I, I thought it was time there was a ballad written to her. Could you come on? And it was, it was the, hundredth, um, the hundredth anniversary of her finally getting recognition as um, a veterinary surgeon. And, uh, can, can I do it from here? No, come out to the field. I, 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 am, I am awful nervous and I've never entered a competition. I have never entered a competition before in my life. <laughs> no, wait, there's no difference. Um, You're among friends. You're among friends. Work away. Work away. Sing me. Sing me. You don't mind. Sing me. And I wasn't expecting this, so I hadn't learned this song. I have to read it. No bother to do Aline cos she came from Tipperary of noble stock she was bound for fame against the wishes of her kinfolk. Uh, I better start that again. I am nervous. <laughs> Aline cos she came from Tipperary of noble stock she was bound for fame. Against the wishes of her kinfolk, in a man's world she staked her claim to become a veterinary surgeon. In the 1890s, twas an uphill climb, but her character and determination for some change and new rules enshrine. Aline was born in 1868, just a few miles out from Tipperary town, at Cardangan Manor by the River Arra, which gave name to that county of renown. She played in the fields and by the river 
where of nature an animal moves to do bound with a love for life and its creations her true vocation there she found at ten years of age and her father's passing she was taken across the Irish Sea, where she received her education, and life had offered great liberty. Though Major Widrington, her guardian, encouraged her to pursue her dream, Fearing embarrassment to her mother, she enrolled in a nurse's training scheme. <coughs> While training at London Hospital, yearning for veterinary, her heart had weighed down. So discontent, she left the city and headed north to Edinburgh town. There she enrolled in the new veterinary clinic of William Williams, a famed taffy. She applied herself to the task before her with dedication and assiduity. That's a big word for you. Uh, there followed some battles with the menfolk of the Veterinary Society's committee and a legal challenge which denied her access to a veterinary degree. But in spite of their clever sleight of hand, she battled on with tenacity to complete her studies in 1900 with a testimonial from her famed Taffy. So with her testimonial and a string of medals, so with her testimonial and a string of medals, for zoology and junior anatomy and a recommendation for a post assistant to William Byrne, MRCV. William Byrne, a kind and generous fellow, ran a practice in the village of Atlee. Though her arrival caused some consternation, her skills won both favor and intrigue. While in Roscommon, a part-time appointment as veterinary inspector came her way. But the men of influence could not accept her till her fighting spirit came back into play. Local practitioners, they stood behind her, so the Tufts relented, and with a compromise, they dropped veterinary from her title, then they crossed their T's and dotted their I's. At the age of just 46 years, William Byrne passed on, in 1910, so Aline Cust assumed his practice, um, poised and valiant in the calling of men. She, ch she charged her rich clients a handsome fee and greeted the poor ones with gentle smiles. She, ne she never forgot the friends who had her and her kindness she spread across these aisles. I'm not even ever read it. 
And now in 1915, she left old Ireland in her, in her own car. She drove to France as a volunteer with the Auxiliary Corps. Treating war horses, she took her chance. Then back in Ireland in 1919, the winds of change, they began to blow. New laws on gender discrimination ensured all ways like time was gold. Aline sat her final examination, albeit only the oral part. She, she received her RCVS diploma <coughs> and kissed goodbye to the bleeding heart. She now could practice with due distinction. Her battles at last were at an end. And her name was written into history. The first female vet in Britain and Ireland. Soon failing health became a challenge. She... Uh, Soon failing health, it brought more changes. She sold her practice and moved away to the new forest in the south of England. With her dogs and horses, she spent her days. Then the final bell tolled out for Aline while visiting friends on Jamaica's shore. And an icon for women's rights and justice, she'll be remembered forevermore. Yeah. Very good. Beautifully put together. I think that's the first song I ever heard about the bass. Judas. It's in trap three at this time. <laughs> we have Gavin Borden. All the way from Wexford Gavin, is it? Aye, Wexford Town. And Gavin has written a topical one because uh, Paul, you wrote it during the pandemic, did you? The Zoom note, is it? I wrote a couple of weeks ago, yeah. Uh, the Zoom note. For us and the people now who can't even turn on a computer, for that, just after that, I couldn't turn on a computer. <coughs> now I have two of them on my desk. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I should be saying my rosary. <laughs> so, you can give us entry number three, Gavin Gordon, the Zoom note, sir. No doubt. Make it. Just a, a song I wrote because maybe two years before the pandemic struck, I started to get involved in traditional singing and I was really enjoying it. And then all of a sudden the government turns around and tells me we can't sing anymore. So I took to the Zoom then because I needed somewhere to go and I was going mad in the head. So yeah. by the end of the two years of lockdowns and this, that and the other, I kind of said to myself, well, I should maybe make a record of this and we, we put a few words together about it and show people what it was about. So I'll try it for you anyway. <coughs> uh, <coughs> it's fair to say these last two years I've sung a lot on Zoom. In fact, I'd go so far to say I haven't left this room With a pike above me head here while sitting in me chair I've sung a fair few songs with ye, but not always the right air The early days sometimes were rough as we all found our feet Zoom was our only singing place I thought we'd never meet We came across some bombers who tried to spoil our fun we soon wised up and shut the door and had them on the run. 
On Wanda nights we'd meet at six and go to Limerick town, where once brave Sarsfield rode on out there to defeat the crown. Our songs they were a plenty, the crack a mighty term. Some topics controversial as we opened cans of worms. <laughs> we'll not forget North Wexford, for they have risen too. <coughs> oh, Whalon's fortunes, Lambert's, the rebel banner flew. Monthly they would bring us together for a song. They kept us going gaily all through the pandemic long. Now the blackbirds, they are able and they are of good stock. To perch round even Seamus, to both of them we'd flock. For Tuesday's gentle session, we'd all land down in their nest. The larks, thrushes, and linnets in song would have no rest. I'll not forget dark in shone, one place it all began. MacDarry, Yates, and Michael Steen, a mighty weekend ran. They led the way without delay to gather us to Zoom from Clan Manny and Bally Liffin in a virtual singing room. On Wednesday nights we had a choice of where to go and sing. Monthly I to London I would go to Ken and Peter's thing. Their harmonies were splendid, we came from everywhere to hear their songs and sing along. We hadn't got a care. To Dundalk too on a Wednesday night, sometimes I'd go along. The crew was small, so well I knew to bring out a few songs. It wasn't long before I'd sung my repertoire complete and had to learn before return some more songs from the street. On Thursdays you might find me in Belfast for the night. The Sunflower Club, it was the place, oh, Antrim's leading light. Bill and Priam ran the show with Fergus and Mary too. It was a delight on any night to join this mighty crew. We'll not forget John Condon and all that he has done. He'd call us each first Friday to Spansel Hill we'd come. We'd sing of the great Robbie with his legacy so tall. Such fun we had there singing in Tommy Lehan's hall. On Friday nights we'd all meet up and head to Angolin. Such a crowd of singers there like never before was seen. One hundred heads all in the room, it was a pleasing sight. Song choice was all important for, you had to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> On Saturday nights it was all right, though we could not venture out. We formed a gang who laughed and sang, our anthem had a hout. Many countries represented, no boundaries we proposed. In the bottle of stout, we'd sing on out, our doors they never closed. I have to go to the... Have to. From Norland County, Dublin, in a place called Easter Snow. The Seamus and his art centre, it was a place we'd go. On a Saturday night, with great delight, we'd all meet up and sing. With MacDarry Yates as far on tea, it was a mighty thing. On Sunday nights, I'd take a break, a well-earned singer's rest. i tune into Cork, you see, their live stream was the best. It was so very pleasant, those Cork songs far to hear. To end the week with the banks of the Lee floating in my ear. When we are long and past it and have forgotten the old zoom, we'll not forget the friends we made within those tiny rooms. We will so love to meet them when we get back on the road, once again to hear their stories and the songs we love the most. So fare thee well to all on Zoom, I hope we meet again. I have enjoyed the time we shared, for it was nobly spent. Hard times created friendships that will last our whole lives through. I was glad to hear your singing till we meet again. Adieu. Amen.
They won't believe us. They won't believe us in future years to say that is the way we sing. That is the way we were confined to our, to our rooms. You know? There was a girl. There was a girl who was working the hotel in the store, and uh, she had a lisp. And uh, some of the boys were trying to chat her up. And she'd say, would you come to the dance? She said, no, Mr. Murray must be, said we must be in our wounds by 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and our fourth entry is Sean O'Meelachan, who's not here with us. And the song is The Bard of Cora Clare. How did I hear that? Word that's before, it's town Cora Clare. And it's not about Senan, it is, in case you think it is about Senan. <laughs> Uh, Sean can't be with us, but I think it's been sung by Joe Mack. Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you the famous Joe Mack? Oh, yes, sir. That's him. Of course. Of course. I'll write that, Joe. Hello. 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 I've had the pleasure of knowing Seamus McMahona for approximately 55 years, ever since he came to our locality, Gwaeltha Quos Gree, as an organiser for Cunran the Gwaeltha. He immersed himself immediately in the local culture, getting to know all the local musicians, singers and songs. At that time, house sessions were organised regularly by the local branch of Quoltha's Quoltha or Eirn, and Seamus <coughs> attended many of those adding his own personality and talents to our sessions. Through Seamus, we got to know many of the greats of traditional music and song. And I sometimes had the pleasure of travelling with him to music events throughout the county. He was the only man I know who could play the tin whistle while driving the car. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought texting when while driving was bad. <laughs> when he married Una, he moved to Cox City and later to Dublin, where he worked with Coltus. In later years, my meetings with Seamus were mainly at Flahan and Keol, on Tarotus, our music festivals of various kinds. We always enjoyed meeting up and reminiscing about our youthful adventures. In recent years, his health was failing, and I was sad to hear of his demise, whereupon I decided that I owed him a song in his memory. I regret that I cannot be with you on this occasion owing to health problems, and I sincerely thank you for thanking me for being with me, for him. And I will skip that bit. And the final bit was, I'm sure it will be a very enjoyable session, and I wish the best of luck to all the competitors. That's from Sean O'Meena. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
On many a night by fireside bright We'd listen to him sing Or play with feeling jigs and reels Which made the rafters ring Our stories told of heroes bold Our characters from Clare Our winter's night were oft made bright by the man from Coorickler. On stages grand in foreign land, he also gained renown. His four green fields applause received in Philadelphia town. While here at home, or o'er the phone, his style was still the same being always true, as we all knew, to Duke's land and name. O oh, Seamus, you are famous for your music and your song. We're glad we knew a guy like yours, but miss you now you're gone. We trust your gallant offsprings to preserve with love and care the name of Mark Mahuna is the bard of Sung with him all the years. One of the three Euros. <laughs> Patrick Francis O'Sullivan. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Francis, you're around. <laughs> it's like it's like you'd see in the dead doors now go T O S F. Third order of Saint Francis. <laughs> a, a lover of animals. <laughs> previous, a lover of animals. A previous winner of this competition, Pat O'Sullivan. All right, we'll find you. And as we as we are, as we're here for friends of Pat Talks, we all again today send our good wishes to Pat's great friend Thomas McKenna, who yeah. can't be with us. And tell him if you're talking to Pat, he was missed. Yeah. Pat did. Yeah. Pat did. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, Kerry Long ago was the name of the song. Uh, Kerry Long ago, and uh, I suppose it's good to talk about going down memory lane when the wheel of life was traveling at a slower pace than it is today. If we were talking Irish, we'd call it boring the smooth. Uh, Kerry Long ago, so. <coughs> In silent contemplation, I look back with misty eyes to country life in Ireland when we were little boys. We wore no shoes in summertime and danced in winter snow. Oh, life was just so simple then, in Kerry long ago. On the sunny Sunday morning, we watched each lad and comely lass, with rally bikes and horse and trap, make their way to early mass. The priest upon the altar would smile and say hello as those people clasp their rosary beads so tight <coughs> in Kerry long ago. On rod and reel we fished the field with friends we had galore. To catch the elusive trout was a thrill no doubt as we played it o'er and o'er. We'd cast our bait, and then we'd wait as the current it would flow. On those river banks we gave God thanks in Kerry long 
Hallå. The music men from Skar to Glen, their names we do recall. Padre Keith, Dennis Murphy, Johnny Larry in the hall. Those mellow notes would sweetly ring as Padrick stroke the bow. To the magic of the dancing feet in Kerry long ago. At night came round the fireside before we went to bed. We all got down on bended knee as the family rosary it was said. When I recited eleven Hail Marys to the decade, my father said, Glory, Pat. And then I added three more, of course, as he violently shook his hat. Sad we now relate the cruel, bitter fate <coughs> that has stolen our youth away. But our hearts are still young and full of fun, although we are old and grey. The fire that burns in our soul sends out a golden glow. We never did throw in the towel in Kerry long ago. Now, number six is uh, another Wexford man who we kidnapped <laughs> and we wouldn't send him home and we wouldn't give him away now for all the gold and carry him. But he's now our own uh, a winner this year of the John McCarthy newly composed ballad competition and uh, a member of the Stoll Drama Group, my good self. Great man to build a set or to build anything for you. John Kinsella will sing the Nasser Jack Toad. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Don't put me up too high, it's harder to fall. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Next year I'm submitting my song in the 1st of January. So I'll be first on. <laughs> it's easier. Uh, the Nasser Jack Toad is only found in two places in Ireland. The main one being in Castle Gregory, and uh, the other one is down in Cremann. So uh, the um, National Parks and Wildlife Services tried to uh, enhance the population around Castle Gregory, so they actually took the spawn from Castle Gregory and brought it down to Fort Island, where the spawn hatched and into little tadpoles and then into frogs. And when they were about an inch or so in size, they brought them back to Castle Gregory and set him out in the wild. And uh, RT was there, maybe if you're looking at the news this e one evening there, the six o'clock news, uh, it, it was on the, on the news. So this is called the Natterjack Toad. This is my insurance. <laughs> you mightn't need it. <coughs> now you've all heard of Fungi and Fair Dingle Town. Alas, he's gone from us. No sight, nor no sound. But for all, sorry, look, that's, I need to be paper after all. I'll start again. Yeah, yeah. I'll start again if you don't mind. Now you've all heard of Fungi and Fair Dingle Town. Alas, he's gone from us. No sight, nor no sound. But for all's not yet lost. Off your chest, take a load. Why not visit the home of the Natterjack Toad? For they come in their thousands each year to see me, and it's easy to get here by land or by sea. On your way out to Dingle, take a right off the road. Now let me tell you my story. I'm a natterjack toad. I was born down in Forta in Cork by the Lee, but how I got there is still a mystery to me, <laughs> for I knew I belonged in that place by the sea, 
How I pined for the sand dunes of Castle Gregory. <laughs> and they saw how I longed for my ancestral home, back where there were sand hills and freedom to roam. In my dreams I could hear my poor ma calling me as she searched between the sand dunes of Castle Gregory. <laughs> so they loaded a van with my siblings and me through McCroom and Killarney, then on to Tralee. We were all so excited, so we thought we'd explode, heading west to the home of the Natter Jack Road. Now a large crowd had gathered our freedom to see. RT sent a camera and a man called George Lee. <laughs> so I pumped up me chest and said, this life's for me. Sure, I'm famous at last. I'm a toad on TV. <laughs> I am strikingly handsome, or so I've been told. And they say that my body is a speckly gold. Yellow stripe down my back, well, that's what they tell me. As I stride round the sand dunes of oh, Castle, Castle Gregory. <laughs> now by day I'm asleep tucked away underground. After supper at night, there's romance to be found, <laughs> and some say my love call can be heard in trally, <laughs> courting girl toads in the sand dunes of <laughs> Castle Gregory. <laughs> but I've heard I'm endangered, so it's all up to you to protect where I live or I'll end up in a zoo. <laughs> so if you go out walking, please, Look out for me. I'm a natterjack toad down in Castle Gregory. So now that's my story, and I hope you'll agree that there's room on this planet for you and for me. And if you have the transport, whatever the mode, why not visit the home of then I heard I go. John is another one. John is another one written about the, the lover of nature. Uh, the, 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 no, the weed. Uh, no. Uh, may, maybe like a Jap yeah. Japanese lap weed, maybe I could grow on you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And if you want to see John tonight, John is the musical <coughs> director in charge of the restored folk choir who will be singing at Mass at Half City. Yeah. 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 So, um, you have a night off for you. You have a night off for you. Have you have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> might be doing it yet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks John, we're now on to, we're going from Wakeford Kelly up to Fermanagh. No, sir. And I met Julianne, Julianne last night, first time, Julianne McCaffrey, and um, I was told that she is the current holder of the All Ireland title for the newly composed ballot competition. Is that right? Who told me that? <laughs> <laughs> Form, form. The odd liar slips in. Rephrase that. Are you saying the odd liar? The odd liar. Okay, you're all witnesses to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's on camera, you're all right. Yeah. <laughs> and then oh, I do but we are delighted to have you, Delane, for the first visit to Abbey Field. We hope to be the first of many. And uh, your song is called The Famine Lament. So I'll leave you to introduce okay. it. Okay.
Um, I'm delighted to be here and I have to say it's it's great as much as all of us are a bit nervous about being recorded it's great that the songs are being recorded because it's something that we have you yeah. know myself and Tommy and others have have spoke about it in years in recent years at the FLA because a lot of the songs are lost um, after the competitions so um, it is great to see them being recorded and actually the this song it um, what inspired me to, to write it um, is the singing session video page on, on Facebook, Sean McLaughlin posted a, a video of, of me singing a song called A Storm McCree and an American lady uh, posted a comment. She posted a comment saying that she had never um, thought about emigration from the point of view of um, the person who has been left in Ireland. Yeah. Um, it's always you know someone wanting to return to Ireland and th that kind of sparked my interest in composing a song um, looking at someone who has remained in Ireland but they didn't want to go and they were happy staying there and they didn't want their loved ones to return either because times were so bad. Um, so that's really the inspiration for the song. So it's it's um, quite a simple <coughs> song with sort of a, a repetitive line in it um, that Hopefully, um, in, in years to come, people will remember. So it's the famine lament. As I lay asleep in bed last night, my dreams clear and bright, I heard a whisper in the air call out a sorry plight and then I saw my sister back in our native land for life had taken roots that we had never planned I recall her clearly as a child her red flowing hair her kind smiling stare would warm the cold air the freckles on her fair skin dotted out like sand for life had taken roots that we had never planned. I hear her cries for family who have all moved away. For she remained in Ireland, but she ne'er asked us to stay. At one time she was happy, leaving she couldn't understand. For life had taken roots that we had never planned. As I lay there in the quiet, watching her tears, I saw her life rush past me, worse than my fears. She lived a simple, sorry life, no possessions, great or grand. For life had taken roots that we had never planned. At her husband's grave she prays that we are in good health, not asking for our return or for any other wealth. Her little baby son had died as she held him in her hands. For life had taken roots that we had never planned. I curse the cruel landlord who made her leave her home. With no husband or relation she was forced to roam. To shelter in a workhouse, chores completed on demand. For life had taken roots that we had never <coughs> planned. I woke up from this nightmare to a knock at my door. 
The postman with a letter from my native shores News of my poor sister She had left these earthly lands For life had taken roots that we had never planned She died of the hunger at the age of 22 I didn't have a chance to bid a fond adieu. They say she lies in a mass grave with rosary beads in hand. For life had taken roots that we had never planned. So to all Irish emigrants who have left their native homes, know that Ireland remains with you, even if you roam. Never forget your family is my final soul command. For life may take roots, that you had never known. I think it would be appropriate because of yeah. the weekend that's in it. I an old man now, my head is grey, and my bones are brittle too. Come sit yourself down there a while, and I soon will tell to you of the fine young lad that once I was. In the days of long ago, when I picked the wild blackberries in the hills around the stone. Yes, I was lied and hardy then, with hair as black as snow. We wore no shoes in summer time, and we laughed through winter snows. I stood tall and straight as I now relate, but the years have taken their toll since I picked the wild blackberries in. Hills around the stone. I fished for sea trout in my lovely silver river field, and from Foley's orchard I confess, sweet apples I did steal. I felt pinch of thorn on an autumn morn from the smearla to Mount Corn, where I picked the wild blackberries in the hills around the stone. I kicked football in the sport field. As the goalposts I did guard, I played handball in the valley and went home by Ordinard. In the parson's, in the parson's ward, I oft times stood where my first kiss I stole. Where I picked the wild blackberries in the hills around the stone. From Ballygrinnan, twin sports spires, 
I see rising from the square And the castle stands defiantly Beside that river fair The island rest calls to the west I now once more behold Where I picked the wild blackberries in the hills around the stone So there you have it, that's my tale From my earliest sunny climb at the fire of memories I'll warm my hands if God gives me time. <coughs> Cross the swirling tide and the ocean wide will fly my immigrant soul to where I pick the wild blackberries in the hills around. Judas. <laughs> 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 Are you ready to go to the adjudication or do we have to bring in the various cities like Madrid? I was only called to make it interesting. I wouldn't like your job. So, Seamus and Joe have been the enviable task of adjudicating, but can we first of all? Give our grateful thanks to all those who went to the trouble to participate. Yeah. I'd love to be able to put pen to paper and write, but in my job, I don't put anything in paper unless I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, just to those uh, authors of the song, I always tell this story about uh, my father when he wrote the song called The Ballad of Tommy Daly. Back in 1936, the famous Claire Gorley, who was tragically killed in a car accident. Mm. And years later, we had a repetition of history. Martin Moore was talking about history repeating itself this morning when we had the tragedy of our own Tommy Quaid yes. yeah. being killed. And no. perhaps before the night is out, our host, uh, Philip, will give us the ballad of Tommy Quaid. Lovely. And uh, Gary penned that song, The Ballad of Tommy Quaid. Okay. And it was published in the local rags of the paper. And uh, two weeks later, another Lament for Tommy Quaid was published, and there was my father's song, The Ballad of uh, Tommy Daly, plagiarized, word for word. Except that when uh, Tommy Daly goes, on the windswept hills of Tulla, where the Clermen placed their dead for solemn use, stand sentinel above a hodler's head. And from the frozen Northlands, the bottom bleak and bare, the dirge of Tommy Daly goes marching on through Clare. Now, he had all that, and on, to make it rhyme for, for Limerick, it was, it goes marching through the hills of Limerick Fair. And it rhymed the whole way up, you see. So we looked at who had his name down in that, and there was a famous man from Newcastle called James. And Gary decided he'd write to James to attend the office. <laughs> and I have a topic I would like to discuss with you. So James came into the office, and now we knew who we were dealing with. And Gary said to him, now Jim, I know you and you know me. I know you more wrote, you no more wrote that song than I wrote the four Gospels. <laughs> I know it, 
and you run. But who else in North Kerry, eh? <laughs> so he said, where do you get to song? I saw it in a magazine, he said. So I thought it was like, like song, and I just changed the last words of it. <laughs> so you're going to sign an apology now, says Gary. <laughs> Tisn't what we were looking for royalties or anything like that, but, mm -hmm. but it's just the honour of having written the song and, uh, yeah. and yes. you'll answer yes. someone else would take it. So he wrote out, I, I acknowledge that I did not write this song, Lament Tommy Quaid, and I took the words from blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So as he was going out the door, Gary called him back and said, oh, by the way, now, Jim, before you go, I have written up a poem about you. Yeah. Have you, Gary? What, how does it go? Yeah. Someone steal your thunder and someone steal your purse. <laughs> For a man who steals a dead man's words is a thief far worse than worse. <laughs> you stole pennies from a dead man's eyes as mean as I ever saw. And if you ever do it again, I'll give you a belt of the law. <laughs> you know what his response was? Is that about me, Gary? <laughs> Would you ever give me 20 copies of that? <laughs> and as Eamon Kelly said, which we did. <laughs> Um, just, uh, I'm just going to start out. Joe is going to do most of the talking here, but just to be, um, just to be heard, um, it's very, very um, difficult. Um, for people like Joe and I for to sit down and adjudicate these, but it, it has to be done. Um, simply because all of the songs that we've heard are very personal to the people that wrote them. And just to take, uh, to say, to reiterate what Julianne said there earlier on and what Owen has just said there now, it's very, very important that um, the songs be recorded with the names of the composers, regardless of when they're written. Um, there's a, 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 a fairly big group of us that um, research a lot of songs and go back. And, there's, a, there's a huge amount of traditional songs out there <coughs> that are not attributed to any person. Um, and the, the composers of the songs are basically lost to people, which is wrong, I think. Um, any songs that are uh, good enough to be sung for hundreds of years um, should be researched and try and find out uh, basically where they originated. And there's a, a huge amount of information out there at the moment, especially with the internet being made, making it so easy for people. Um, that we're now able to put names to a huge amount of the traditional songs, continuing to do it. So, obviously, with newly composed songs, it's uh, imperative that we save those and save the, uh, as well, the comments that were made on the reason why the songs were sung, um, along with the names. So, um, with that in mind, um, Obviously, there are songs of place and personal, very personal songs to people, um, and of course the the historic songs. But um, uh, our job is to go through the nitty gritty and uh, to try and and have to make a decision on the day. Uh, as Joe said earlier on, two other adjudicators could sit down and come up with. Um, mostly, I think, uh, in the competitions um, over the years. Uh, the the first uh, the, the first three songs will be mostly picked by uh, out the mass uh, sort of group of adjudicators. Uh, they might not always be in the same order, but the first three songs will nearly always be there. So with that, I just hand you over to Joe, and uh, Joe can uh, enlighten you on his few words <laughs> and uh, the. Uh, results. Uh, may I compliment our composers on their entries for what has become a most prestigious newly composed traditional ballad competition in memory of a man who among his many accomplishments was a prolific wordsmith.
No, I don't, like Henry VIII said to each of his six wives, they don't need to hold you long, but um, at the same time, uh, you didn't make our job any easier. And as Seamus just said, two different adjudicators might alter the placings. So if your song doesn't end up in the winner's enclosure, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of the five of the seven fine songs we heard. Uh, we have reached what might be a fallible verdict and uh, I'll call the three <coughs> entries that are in the winner's enclosure in reverse order. So before, before yeah, sorry, go on, I, I was just going to say, will somebody just hold the door open uh, when he oh, gives yeah. the results, <laughs> so that we can, so that we, so that we can make a quick escape? <laughs> No, just, Mike, before, Mike Parrish has his car parked outside the road from anyway, so I'm okay. Just before you do, do that, you are, I'm conscious of uh, the job of adjudicators and the job of any referee in anything uh, is to, to, to promote and to encourage. Not like the famous adjudicator at a drama festival of which our drama group in, before my time the, what they were known as the Listowel Dramatic Class at that time, which more dramatic who performed, and the adjudicator came up and said, I've seen a play performed tonight by the Listowel Drama Group, and I would urge the, the ladies and gentlemen of that group that they'd be better employed to take up an activity to while away the long winter evenings, which would be much more productive <laughs> than acting on the stage. <laughs> and I would suggest that they all take up knitting. <laughs> 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 Well, if that had been taken <coughs> to heart, you wouldn't have seen Sive, you wouldn't have seen the beauty in the blood, you wouldn't have seen Honey Spike or the Field because they were written. The second thing that my father said about adjudication, he said, be very, very careful if you're ever asked to adjudicate anything, that you're not like the man who cuts the throat of the skylark to see what makes it sing. <laughs> and I would, I would definitely, I would definitely um, concur with uh, what Owen said there. Um, we most certainly don't want to discourage people from writing songs, uh, especially songs as good as the seven songs that are here, because I'm sure that any of the seven songs will be heard yeah. in sessions all over the place yeah, yeah, in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, therefore, <laughs> now to get back to the uh, three okay. entries. In third place, The Famine Lament. Oh. Julianne, give her oh. a round of applause. In second place, uh, Sean O'Muinacon's song, The Bard of Cúra Clare, in memory of the great Seamus McMahon, who is a friend to all of us. And um, we'll have the brown envelope In for in first place. Uh, an account of the vaccine that brought us through the Zoom and allowed traditional singing to survive the pandemic. The Zoom. Now, I would like to call the others to accept their 
black in honor of the presentation. Show me my card out. Con Warden. Con Warden. President Con. Pat Sullivan. Pat Sullivan. Thank you. From my bad. John now can I Gavin to come forward again as we would like to present you Gavin Pope with the trophy for the winning song this year. Which is a sleeve. The land of the gale. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, is it a new song you're yeah. looking for, or? Oh, yeah. oh God bless okay. you. <laughs> 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 the brown envelope. <laughs> I'm, I'm very grateful to everybody that's helped me along the way, and you all know who you are. I've come to you for various things or permissions to do something, and everybody has been wonderful. And it's a thing that I'd like to continue doing for years and years to come. Thank you. Um, so this is the zoom note. <coughs> it, it's fair to say these last two years. What they're not two. It's fair to say these last two years I've sung a lot on Zoom. In fact, I'd go so far to say I haven't left this room with a pike above me head here while sitting in my chair. I've sung a fair few songs with ye, but not always the right air. The early days sometimes were rough, as we all found our feet. Zoom was our only singing place, I thought we'd never meet. We came across some bombers who tried to spoil our fun. We soon wised up and shut the door and had them on the run. On Monday nights we'd meet at six and go to Limerick Town. Where once brave Sarsfield rode on out there to defeat the crown. Our songs they were a plenty, the crack a mighty turn. Some topics controversial as we opened cans of worms. We'll not forget North Wexford, for they have risen too. Oh, Fuelon's fortunes, Lambert's, the rebel banner flew. Monthly they would bring us together for a song. They kept us going gaily all through the pandemic long. Now the blackbirds, they were able, and they are of good stock, to perch round even Seamus, to both of them we'd flock. For Tuesday's gentle session we'd all land down in their nest, the larks, thrushes and linnets, in song would have no rest. On Wednesday nights we had a choice of where to go and sing. To London I would monthly go to Ken and Peter's thing. Their harmonies were splendid, we came from everywhere. To hear their songs and sing along, we hadn't got a care. To Dundalk too on a Wednesday night, sometimes I'd go along. The crew was small, so well I knew to bring out a few songs. It wasn't long before I'd sung my repertoire complete and had to learn before return some more songs from the street. We'll not forget Dark in Shown, one place it all began. MacDarry Yates and Michael Steen, a mighty weekend ran. They led the way without delay to bring us all to Zoom. Such from Clown Manny and Bally Liffin in a virtual singing room. On 
Wednesday night, sweet, no, on Thursday night, on Thursday you might find me in Belfast for the night. The Sunflower Club, it was the place, so oh, Antrim's leading light. Bill and Priam ran the show with Fergus and Mary too. It was a delight on any night to join this mighty crew. We'll not forget John Condon and all that he has done. He'd call us each first Friday to Spansel Hill we'd come. We'd sing of the great Robbie with his legacy so tall. Such fun we had there singing in. Tommy Lahan's Hall. On Friday nights we'd all meet up and head to Angolene. Such a crowd of singers there like never before was seen. One hundred heads all in the room, it was a pleasing sight. Song choice was all important for, you had to get it right. On Saturday nights it was all right, though we could not venture out. We formed a gang who laughed and sang, our anthem had a hout. Many countries represented, no boundaries we proposed. In the Battle of Stout, we'd sing on out, our doors they never closed. From Nolan County, Dublin, in a place called Easter Snow, the Seamus Ennis Art Centre, it was a place we'd go. On Saturday night, with great delight, we'd all meet up and sing. With Macdarry Yates as far on tea, it was a mighty thing. On Sunday nights, I'd take a break, a well-earned singer's rest. I'd tune in to Cork, you see, their live stream was the best. It was so very pleasant for those Cork songs for to hear. To end the week with the banks of the Lee floating in my yeah. ear. Yeah. <laughs> when we are long and past it and have forgotten the old zoo, <coughs> we'll not forget the friends we made within those tiny rooms. We will so love to meet them when we get back on the road. Once again to hear their stories and the songs we love the most. So fare thee well to all on Zoom, I hope we meet again. I have enjoyed the time we shared, for it was nobly spent. Hard times created friendships that will last our whole lives true. I was glad to hear your singing till we meet again. And you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I just tell a story before you all go um, about newly composed ballads? I was asked um, many years ago to adjudicate a newly composed ballad competition at an All Britain FLA, which was held in Glasgow, <coughs> which I duly did. And um, the uh, all the ballads were uh, handed to me and there was a huge stack of papers in my hand and I thought, bloody hell, this competition is going to go on all night. <laughs> um, anyway, um, the uh, call steward went through the list of singers and they called the list of singers. I sorted out the songs and the, <laughs> the adjudicator for the clerk was sitting at this side of me and I'm sitting at the table and pulled out the song and several things, I think there was eight or nine songs all together. Anyway, the last song, uh, the track called The Last Singer and I'm sitting there and I thought, how can this be the last singer? I still have a wad of papers in me hand here with songs written on. <laughs> so, she called the last singer anyway and he got up and I pulled out the song and I had a look through and I looked through and looked through and he proceeded to sing a song there was and this this was actually um, in it was on it was local news it, it happened in Belfast 
and uh, it was on the television, it made its way to Sky News at the time and mm -hmm. it was on the it's papers and everything mm -hmm. and there was a monkey escaped from the zoo <laughs> in Belfast, <laughs> which was the news. This man took the song, or took the, the story and he decided wouldn't it be great if somebody got out there to chase the monkey and wouldn't it be great if he chased them through the 32 counties of Ireland, right? So he proceeded to uh, write the song and he wrote a, a verse for each of the 32 counties of Ireland. Plus another 10 verses, right? 42 verses. And uh, in fact, the man should have got a medal because he got up and he sang the 42 verses without looking at a piece of paper. Anyway, and it, and it, they, they, they eventually captured the monkey. But anyway, they didn't have to do what he said, <laughs> lucky enough. Um, but uh, anyway, th that year we went to the All Ireland flag. And I was in the pub. <laughs> My daughter Anne Marie and I were sitting in the singing pub where all the singing was going on. And Paddy Berry from Wexford, our good friend Paddy, was far at the in the in the pub. And um, the singing was going great. We were having a drink for the afternoon, the same as here. And the next thing, I gave Anne Marie a nudge and I said, "Look at the far door." I said, "There's your man from Glasgow." I said, "They wrote the song about the monkey." Yeah. So. I called, we were, we were getting ready to go and have our tea. I called Paddy Berry over and I said, Paddy, I said, see that man. <laughs> and I, I remembered the man's name, I can't remember his name now. Robbie. Uh, the, Robbie. 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 I said, Robbie is coming in the, the door above, I said, and I said, get him to sing the song that he wrote about the monkey escaping <laughs> from his own Belfast. <laughs> so anyway, there was a few more singers called and the next thing, Paddy Berry called Robbie and gave a bit of a spiel about the song that he was after reading, writing about the monkey escape and asked him to sing it. I gave Anne Marie and I just said, let's get out of here quick, <laughs> cut our stick, and we were gone out the door. Um, a couple of hours later, I'm walking down the street and I met John Ennis and Paddy Berry and a few others walking up the street at the other side. You. And all I could hear, come over here, you <laughs> <were there>. <laughs> Yes, so and so. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, by the time your man was finished singing, he said, most of the crowd had gone. <laughs> yeah, I've been a sorry, I'm finishing on no. Sorry, I've been asked to special request to know would John Kinsey was singing his winning, winning song and John McAfee. Yes. As the barrel lights go down on the wrong side of town, he says, Pat, I think you've had too many. And I hold back the tears as I recall the years. Too much pain for an old man to carry. Far away across the sea, a voice calls out to me, and I know it's the ghost of my Annie. She says, come back to stay, you've been too long away. Sure, why don't you come back home to carry? Will you meet me tonight where the stars shine so bright? And the moon casts her beam o'er Kilshanig. Then we'll ramble away down beside Trally Bay as we stroll through the old Maharys. At Trench Bridge I'd say, Miss, any chance of a kiss? <laughs> For you know I do love you, dear Annie. With a smile, then she'd say, when we reach Sandy Bay, and I'd hope twas the first one of many. <laughs> and those dark aisles so clear from around Scraggan Pier seem to float 
in the glistening night sea. When we'd reach far more, I'd say any a store. When I'm rich, girl, will you marry me? Will you meet me tonight where the stars shine so bright and the moon casts her beam o'er Kilshanig? Then we'll ramble away down beside a trolley bay as we stroll through the old Mahari. But wisdom comes slow to a youth now I know that those far away hills were not greener. From my home I would roam far away across the foam one way trip on an emigrant steamer. Will you meet me tonight where the stars shine so bright and the moon casts her beam o'er Kilshani? <coughs> then we'll ramble away down beside Trally Bay as we stroll through the old Marys. And then we'll ramble away no, down beside Trally Bay. One last stroll through the old Marys. Oh, <laughs>